So I welcome you again for this November 2023, our session in spiritual exercises. I call it exercises of the spirit. Spirit. Not only body needs exercise, but also the spirit needs exercise. So this is our no November session, and we are talking about life. And this night we will say something like the life is flowing like a river. Nothing stands stop, stopped. It's flowing. Everything is in passage. And to pretend or to imagine life that is static, is unrealistic. And once we begin to flow with life, then we are alive. Amen. If we are stagnating, then we are dead. But before we go into that, I would like to say a prayer so that the Lord helps us tonight to do the best we can. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Lord Jesus, in this month of November, we remember our brothers and sisters who departed from us, whom we loved, and they are in eternal life with you. And we ask your mercy upon them, that you grant them the gift of eternal life. Also in this month, we want to give you thanks with a heart of, full of gratitude for all the gifts and blessings and graces that you have bestowed upon us in this year and you have in store for us for the year to come. So may your name be exalted and blessed. We love you, Lord Jesus. We dedicate ourselves to you this time that we are together all that we say and understand for the glory of your Father, that when he looks at us, he may see you in us and be pleased. May your glorious and holy Mother intercede for us always. This we say through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Well, before we go really into our uh, subject of life, I see some new faces. I, I would like to just focus, as I always do, on what are we doing here? What are we coming for? Why do we come here? And I always told you that we are not here to acquire some kind of new knowledge. Oh, you will tell us something that we never heard about. Oh, 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 now I know. <laughs> we are not for that. You heard enough. My sister always complains that she doesn't hear the priest preaching. Complains. Well, she, she is hard of hearing. We all are in our family. So I said, Mary, you know enough. You don't need to hear the priest because what he is saying you heard already a hundred times. Okay? So I say we are not here to discover new truths and uh, give you new knowledge of one kind of, of another. I would like to teach you, if I may, the arts of awareness, awareness, which is the most important thing in the whole world. Let's do this. You follow me, and we are going to make a little gesture of gratitude, all right? So, put your palms up here, okay? 
then raise them up an offering of a gift that you have to the Lord. There is an exchange on the palm of your hands. God is placing his blessing on your palm of the hands. Now you can bring them down and bring it to your heart and bow your head in gratitude. Now, this is a very ancient gesture of gratitude. Now, this is the point I want to make. You can go through it like this. Oh, you told me, so I do it. Then I offer, I receive, I bring down in my heart, and I bow. What I am pointing out to you that this gesture, as I perform it now, is mechanical, mechanical, mechanical. That you have muscles, you have motorial capacity of doing what I am telling you to do, and you do it, because you can do it. But it's mechanical. I could build a machine that could do the same gesture exactly as you, you are doing it, artificial intelligence, God only knows what we will come up with. I don't need you to do this gesture. I, I, I can have a machine to do it. So what is the difference between me, a human being doing this gesture, and a mechanical machine doing this gesture? What is the difference? Attitude of heart. It, the attitude of heart is there. I know that you love Jesus. You will never do anything without Jesus. That, that's attitude of heart is. But when you put out the hands, do it slower. Don't. Be aware, be aware. Now place your gift on your hands. Be aware, what is the gift? How you placed it on the palm of your hands. Then be aware that you are offering it to the Lord. And you offer it with the greatest graciousness that you can, Lord, love you. It's yours. It was mine. I am giving it back to you. Aware what you are doing. Then the Lord says, I love you too. And I give you my blessing. And you will be all right today. Don't worry. And yeah, I receive the Lord's blessing. Aware. Ah, oh, oh, how good it is that I did that. And I close in my heart. I hope I will not forget this moment of my heart. And thank you, Lord. Slowly, slowly. You can do this gesture probably in about 15 seconds, 20 seconds. You, know, you could do it in one and a half minute. It all depends how fast you go about it. And it all depends how aware you are of what you are doing. That's what I call awareness. The most simple act of awareness is just a simple question that you turn to yourself. It might sound to you a little strange. But suppose that you ask yourself, where am I now? What is my disposition, attitude? Am I happy or am I roughed up? Am I sad because of something that happened today to me? <clears throat> what is my mood? Is a happy mood? I am happy, oh, I could kiss the whole world. Well, be careful because if you are happy to that point, you might make a mistake. 
and kissing their own person. Okay, but you, you are so happy that you are ready to do anything and everything in the world. Well, become a little more aware what kind of happiness it is. I, I'm a little fired up. Well, be careful. Because when you are in that kind of state, you, can, you are bound to say something wrong or do something wrong. And you are out of control because you don't know that you are under the influence of an emotion that can trigger you in a wrong way. Once you become aware, then you are safe. You regain, in a way, your self-control. You regain your self-control. You can say, well, <clears throat> when I was a little boy, I never accepted my family because my family was very poor. My father was alcoholic and I wanted to have a better father. I wanted to have a better home. I wanted to be like the other boys dressed like them and everything, and we were poor. I never got it. And I was always frustrated about that. Now, I became aware of this keenly in my regard. And I discover, even at my old age, after becoming priest, that this is something that is haunting me, that I am dissatisfied. I am not happy with what I have. You are not good enough for me. And it goes on and on and on in life, except that this time I became keenly aware of that. And I say, hey, hold on. Your devil is all around you. Your mood is against you. So open your eyes, for heaven's sake, before you do something wrong and, and maybe mistreat other people only because you think that you were mistreated one, one day. This is the power of awareness. This is what I wish that the Lord could grant you as a grace. Because if you are aware, you will not sin. Many times we say, I do wrong things because I have a weak willpower. Never mind willpower. Willpower will never get you anywhere. Well, maybe a little, yes. But don't, don't overestimate willpower. The only real light that gets you into the kingdom of light is that awareness that you become aware. I have an evil inclination. And this inclination is right here. And I became aware, hey, the devil is chaining you around in this moment. And the moment you become keenly aware of it, you will be delivered because you see. It is not willpower. It is seeing that gets us through troubles and leads us to kingdom. So this awareness is what I am trying to share with you. Now, I wish you, you could have it easily, but unfortunately it might not be so easy 
because awareness, like anything else that is precious in our life, needs exercise, needs repetition, that we, we train ourselves in the awareness. For that reason I proposed, and I'm so happy that Keith is here, because Keith, was, Keith is here, and he made the four uh, basic exercises. Uh, we have them on the video, and uh, they are magnificent. But become aware of sensation of my body. Do I have a pain? Do, do I have uh, parts of my body that are uh, not, not all right? And, uh, and I, I am not even aware of that. Now that you listen to what I have to say, probably your attention is turned to my words while you have a back pain. The back pain is there, no matter how much you pay attention to me. But you, can, you could become, b become aware of it by saying, well, do I have any pain anywhere? And scan your body and become aware. Oh, I have back pain. I forgot about it because I was paying attention to something else but I have it. You are in control once you become aware of it. And it is not only the pain that are there and we don't pay attention to them that can be causing us trouble, but it can go, the awareness can go as far as detecting even the most subtle and slight sensations in my body. And when I myself try to do these exercises of awareness of my body, I thank the Lord because sometimes I come to the point that my whole body becomes vibrant, vibrant. Do you need that, uh, do you know that we have millions and millions uh, skin cells that are sensitized, but are desensitized because we don't pay any attention to them, but to bring them back to life and to have the mastery of my own body. This is the gift of God to me, my body, and to feel it vibrant and full of beautiful sensation that, that are everywhere. It's a pleasure. And it's the most relaxing of all the experiences that you have. Many times I told you before I say the mass, I go to a little earlier, I sit in the sacristy, or if I say it home or somewhere else, I sit for about 10 minutes and go scanning my, my body or listening to the sound, which is another exercise or posturing myself properly. And it, it prepares me for the celebration of the Mass that nothing else could prepare me better. You know, sometimes, you know, uh, I see, say, I'm encouraging you, exercise yourself in self-awareness. And to be in exercise of self-awareness, you probably need time that you don't have. Because we, we don't have time. We never have any time for these exercises. I am retired. I can take a little time. Many of you are still working, and how do I take a time to exercise myself? It's a little more difficult to steal a little time for these exercises. From time to time you can do it, five minutes, ten minutes, go gently on that. I am grateful to the Lord I can stay with these exercises now for about a half an hour. Mm -hmm. But after half an hour I, 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 I am at the end of it myself. 
But I started with two, three minutes and stretching it out and trying more and more. And then you come to the point that you, you really are mastering the aware, your self-awareness. But if we talk about that kind of exercise, I want to point out to you something that doesn't take you away too much from your chores and responsibilities that you have and still give you the privilege of a kind of exercise of self-awareness. And I say this, I drive the car. Now, I, I have to be watchful because at one point or another, I want to step on the accelerator. And I say, well, hold on, hold on. Why, why do you want to accelerate? It's a 30 miles zone, an hour. And I'm driving 40. Why? That's awareness. And many times when I drive, I say, hey, what is your speed? And I have a Toyota that clearly indicates you are driving 25 miles or 30 or 40 or whatever you are driving. It's a big number there, right in front of you. So I say, hey, become a little more aware of what you are doing. Is your uh, reaction to a person a reaction that comes from your childhood? You don't need to interrupt your relationship or your, uh, your conversation with somebody. But without it, somebody even knowing, you can ask yourself in the secret of your heart, of your mind, am I all right in relating to this person? Or is it is some kind of devil is possessing me? Or some kind of undesirable emotion is preventing me to have a nice communication rela- relationship with another person? You wash the dishes. Well, awareness is that sometimes, well, the water is flowing and you wash the dishes. I I need to wash the dishes. Okay. But the the water is so nice. Why don't you put the hand under the water? Just for for a few moments. It's so nice. It's warm. What a creature. What a creature. That's exercise in awareness. Once in my life I was filming at the swing swing in Egypt, the famous swing swing in Egypt. I was filming them, uh, an interview with with an Egyptian archaeologist. We finished the interview. I packed the cameras and everything, and let's go in the car. And the archaeologist told me, Father, did you take a look at the Sphinx? Why don't you look at it? This is one of the wonders of the world. And I realized that he was absolutely right. I was so caught up in my activities that I didn't have even a little time to take a look at that Sphinx. You, you are a robot. You run from one place to another and ne- never even noticing, never even noticing what is there, the marvelous, on your journey 
on your path where you are walking. So this is the arts that I would like to somehow to share with you and lead you to, because at the end of the day, <clears throat> it is not the mechanical life, but it is the life of awareness that really blossoms. Now I can uh, go to, the, to what I wanted to uh, do with you today. But before we go there, let me present you with the parable of Jesus, one of the parable of Jesus, because that's, that will be in the background of everything that I might suggest to you tonight. The parable is about a, a rich man that said, uh, this year my harvest was exceptionally good. So I have barns, but these barns are too small. I, I need to build, build bigger barns so that I can store all these good blessings of God in my barns. And I will have so much that I will say, oh, enjoy yourself. Eat and drink because you have good food and drinks for many years to come. <laughs> and Jesus added that God said to him in that night, you fool, tonight your soul will be required from you and taken away. In other words, you will die. And the wealth that you accumulated, to whom shall it go? And so it is with people who try to satisfy themselves, who live a me mechanical life and don't pay enough attention to what matters to God. And Jesus added, is not life more than possessions? Is not life more precious than what you wear or what you eat? What profit is there to man to gain the whole world and in the process suffer damage to his own life or even forfeit his own life? Well, that's the background. Now, against that background, I can now confidently present you with that theme of today, that life is a river that flows. Nothing is static in life. Everything goes through, passes. In preparation to the, for today's meeting with you, I went to Rockland Cemetery in the, in the afternoon. And I have a favorite spot in Rockland Cemetery on the west side, overlooking the King's Highway. There is the oldest part of Rockland Cemetery, the oldest. They hired masons to put up these old stones because they are all lying on the ground and falling under the pounding of the time. So these masons are raising the stones. So I, I went there and tried to, try to read. So I could read maybe a part of the name, maybe the part of the birthday, part of the death, up to 1832, 1832, beside 1800, before 1832, forget it. It's all washed out by time, completely washed out. So 1832, 
it's not a big deal. It's only 220 years. Imagine those who died in 79. And I was reflecting uh, uh, on myself, William Dewey and his wife, Christine, married people 230 years ago. I guess they were married like people are married today. I love you, you love me, oh, we have our problems, we have our fights, we have our, our desires, we have our dreams, human life, human life. Where is it today? But today, people repeat the same thing. We fight. We have problems. I cannot sleep. I cannot sleep because I have a problem. I am afraid of something. I am anxious about something. I came to Rockland County 40 years ago. <clears throat> Some of you are in these parts of the county, maybe longer than me. Sister Jude, do you remember what was here uh, 50 years ago, 60 years ago? Well, take, for example, the mountain, mountain uh, restaurant. Okay, mountain, uh, mountain. On that side, the, the western side, there was nothing. It was a jungle. When I came, well, there are countless houses there now. The Dominican sisters, they had the high school for the girls across this. Where is it? Uh, they had the, the, the lawn, the big lawn. There were the old mother house. Do you remember? old mother house and the uh, house for the uh, boys, the orphans. The old mother house, the big building near to the uh, Sacred Heart Chapel, is gone. It's all gone. It's all gone. But I, am, I, I imagine that when they were building these houses, they thought, oh, we are building them forever. This is never going to go away. This is, this is it. This assertive. And, uh, and so what I am saying to you, <laughs> Anthony Di Mello goes a little farther than me. He would say, well, take the morning star. Well, the Morning Star was probably around for more than 200, 200 million years. Now, take your position wherever you are and look at the star and say, twinkling, twinkling star, what do you see now? You see me with my worries, with my fears, with my attachments, with my dreams, with what I have, with those I love, what my life is. You see me, you see me. What did you see in this place thousand years ago? Because you were around, weren't you? I wasn't. Who was there standing on my place? Was there anybody? who had the same dreams, the same desires, the same thing that I have now? <clears throat> and what about thousand years in the future? 
maybe there will be people here that don't speak English. Who knows? I mean, life is a stream. Life is a passage. Life moves. And if we want to be alive, we cannot resist. We cannot resist the movement of life. Now, here comes the first exercise that I want to uh, invite you to in engage you in. We will stay in silence for a few minutes. We take a proper position of our bodies and we try to go in fantasy and in memory back to the different stages of my life. So let me go to my childhood. I shared with you that I came from a very poor and dysfunctional family. Okay? Let me go there. Then when I was a little boy, I didn't like school at all. My torture was to go to school. I wanted to play. When I was a young adult, I wanted to adventures. I didn't want a normal human life, managed life. Management was not for me. I wanted adventure. Then when I became priest, I met people, I met people who had a very strong influence upon my decisions regarding my life. Many times I really wonder if I didn't meet those people, my life might have been completely different. I was once with Mother Teresa of Calcutta. I was filming her in the house of the dying. And I was filming her and she says, Father, put down the camera. This man is dying here. Could you anoint him? Okay, of course, Mother. I anointed him during filming. Hey, forget the camera for a little while. This is more important than your camera. But I was so attached to the camera because I have Mother Teresa and in front of the camera I wanted to do a good job. Once I anointed the man, she turns to me and says, Father, would you do me a favor? Well, of course. So what can I do for you if I can? She said, would you go with my sisters to Yemen? I had the flight booked for New York in three days. What did you say? <laughs> uh, if, you, if you can, would you go with a group of my sisters to Yemen? And I said, well, ma Mother, I love you, but uh, I don't think that I'm ready for that. Of course, I didn't go to Yemen. I returned to a good New York. <laughs> but again and again in my life, I returned to that moment of Mother Teresa. And sometimes I ask myself, and if I had consented, if I had said, yes, Mother, I will go with your sister to Yemen, sister. Maybe I would become martyr. They kill Christians in Yemen. Who knows? I could... Well, this, this, this is an important event in my life. There are persons who have a great influence upon the decisions that you make in life or the possessions that you have 
that enslaves you, enslave you. What I am asking you to do is to go through the different stages of your life and say, is there anything that I believed that is the most important thing in the whole world? New York, New York is the most important thing in the whole world. The film on Mother Teresa is the most important thing in the whole world. To have a better childhood is the most important thing in the whole world. To have an adventure is the most important thing in the world. You have in your life the moment that you considered, I cannot live without this. I cannot be without this. This is absolutely indispensable in my life. Go through your life and try to track down those kind of attachments, those kind of uh, things that you decided to do because of your esteem of something, of your ambition, of your fear, of your influence, somebody having a terrible influence upon you and making you do something that you should not have done. Examine your life uh, about this important events in your life. It's good to recognize them. It's good to say and ask today at a distance of 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, where is that big deal? Is it still so important? Is it, is, is, is it indispensable? And even worse than that, is it still there? Because maybe life is a passage. Life flows. Life brings and life takes away. And many things that we are incredibly attached to whether we like it or not, one day might be taken away from us. This is frightening. Is it bad? Or is it liberating? Because it might be liberating. Because when we are attached, we are emotionally upset and many times even mentally impaired and we do things that were not necessary and we should have a courage to say and this is the word that I would like to place upon your heart tonight. We should, we should have the courage with Mother Teresa of Calcutta and now of Saint Teresa of Avila that used to say, this too shall pass. Don't brag. Don't. <laughs> Before you know, this shall pass. Only God remains. Everything else comes and goes and changes. And if you have the courage and the grace of God to say, this too shall pass, you will find in you a profound peace. And you will feel that you are 
you have been freed from chains of attachment that makes your life sometimes totally miserable. And you will be free to go with life where life is, to embrace the new gifts of life, and to give back to your Heavenly Father what He has given to you. Remember the word of Jesus, Father most holy, I give you all praise, and I give you back whatever you have given me, so that you may be glorified in me, and I may be able to glorify you. But there is nothing in life that we have not received. And everything in our life, we have to give back. And in this is the most glorious freedom of life that one can imagine. Only the people who can do this are people you want to be associated with and good friends with. But anyway, let's go back to our project. I give you a few minutes that you go a little and tr try to find in your life those kind of monumental or important events that marked your life, your decisions, whether it was in the infancy or in young age or uh, when you were young adults, in your family life, in your working place, people whom you met, that something happened to you to mark your life, although that life could be even different if something else would have happened to you in your life. So take five minutes and compose yourself. Be straight. Don't move. Don't adjust. And go in your memory, in your past life, and offer everything to the Lord. Okay, I know this is not enough time for you to be uh, that kind of thorough in self-examination of your own life, but you can continue in this exercise on your own. I assure you it will do you a lot of good. Okay, okay, page done. Please do. Now, the second part of this would be this. Uh, in view of what I told you about that kind of spiritual freedom and consciousness of need to be free when we make our decisions. Let's go to what is now. And each one of us has a dream, has a project, something I want to accomplish, somebody I want to meet, 
something that you want to go, to do in in life now be careful because even today when you want to be successful when you want to be connected as they say when you want to be fashionable in one way or another there is always the danger that you will begin to think that it is that what you want is absolutely necessary today. And when I look for the future, what, what, what is my dream? And this is a, the most beautiful dream that I have. I want to move to South Carolina. I want to have the vacation in Aruba next week, next, next year. I want to change my job, or whatever it might be. Again, there is the drive. This is important, because if it is not important, you will not do it. Watch that importance, because that importance can emotionally paralyze you. Because when you build an e emotional expectation, that emotional expectation enslaves you quite nicely. It's not only rational, it's also emotional. So what I'm asking you to examine your life at the present, in the life, in the light of what I told you, life is a passage. This too shall pass. That's not only in the past, because in the past we experienced that passage. Where are all my ambitions of the past? They are all gone. Well, I have ambitions now because it's something that makes part of a human being to have ambitions. And I don't say that it is completely wrong. If you don't have ambition, you end up by not, not do, doing anything. But be careful when the ambition becomes overloaded with a wrong emotional force that I begin to say, I cannot even live unless I achieve this. Or if you put your hope in somebody to help you and, and this person fails you, you will have an emotional breakdown. And I would like to spare it for you and prevent you from doing this by making for your own benefit a list. What are the, my ambitions? What are my goals in my life now, where I am now? What do I want to achieve? Whom do I want to meet? How I manipulate whatever I can manipulate, investments and here and there, to get where I want to get? Write it down. And then comes the most courageous thing that I would say. Say over each of your items that you wrote on a piece of paper with all the honesty of your soul say this too shall pass this too shall pass well is the result of this too shall pass inertia? 
okay then you say so then what why should I why should I try anything the result of that kind of exercise uh, exercise is not precisely inertia but freedom of spirit freedom of negative emotions in whatever I plan to do or whomever I intend to meet and whatever I want to change in my life. Freedom from negative, destructive emotions. And when we say this too shall pass, I know that I say, well, it will work for a little while. I should not panic. I should not uh, have fears uh, to the point that I cannot sleep. I cannot sleep. <clears throat> now I cannot sleep. That's, that's, that's not the way to go. The Indians have a saying, throw yourself in the thicket of the battle, but keep your heart at lotus flower. That means do what you want to do and do it as best as you can and be as intelligent about as you can, but have your heart at the feet of Christ, Jesus. So return to your life. We have a family. We have children. We have a business. We have a career. We have something in our life. We have commitments in our life, don't we? Why don't we get back to some of that? Maybe I will invite my wife and my husband to go to a restaurant. She will say, what? Well, let's, let's go to, to have a dinner together. Why? Uh, just, you know, why? Uh, let's, let's do something strange. Bring a flower to your to your family, bring a flower. Tell to your son, listen boy, don't get excited. You cannot get the, the driver license when you are 15 years old. But I promise, I will help you to get a second-hand car once you get the driver license. Why not? Dad, I love you, I love you. Okay, okay, do something. Why don't you go to a place? I mentioned Aruba. My sister Helen fell in love in Aruba. I told her, Helen, go to Aruba. Your husband died. Go to Aruba, okay? Why not? Go to Aruba. So you return to something that is cherished but peacefully, without that kind of emotional stress. Music. Uh, put that uh, record played of the, of the 60s, 70s on your player and play your favorite song, all right? So why not? That's what I'm saying. Return, return to what is good, what is positive, what gives life. But don't do it with attachments. And when it comes to the point, all right, the dinner is over, the dinner is over, all right. These two shall pass. The flowers are over. Okay, and Aruba is over. I cannot go to, a, I am dying now. I cannot go, a dying person doesn't go to Aruba. Okay, 
Say, this too shall pass. Aruba shall pass. Everything will pass. But whatever I can do in life, I do it with gusto. Well, this is seven o'clock, so I I suggest it to you what I suggest it to you, but uh, keep it in your heart, and I wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, sir. And in December, because it is the month of the nativity of our Lord, and it's Christmas time, and everybody is exceptionally busy at Christmas. We will not have our session in December, but we will resume in January with the next session about life, life passages. <laughs> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all the blessings and graces and gifts that we have received from your Father because of you. May we glorify you in our life. May we give you thanks and through you be grateful to our loving God for creating us and even more for redeeming us and giving us hope of eternal life. Bless you, our God, and exalt you. May your light shine in our darkness. And may your holy and glorious mother intercede for us with you and bring us closer to you. And this we say through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.